Good morning, slaves. This year marks the 10th anniversary of the motherfucking Oaxaca Commune, a seven-month-long popular insurrection in the land of tacos, dubbed by some commentators as the first Latin American revolution of the 21st century. For those not familiar with this epic fucking chapter in the annals of revolt, the Oaxacan uprising began in May of 2006, when members of the famously militant Section 22 of the National Teachers Union, the CNTE, went on strike and occupied the Central Square, or Zócalo, in the state's capital of Oaxaca City, demanding that the government invest more public squilla in education and specifically in schools located in the state's remote rural areas where the majority of the students come from the families of poor indigenous farmers. But rather than break them off a bigger piece on June 14th, Oaxaca's fascistic fucking governor, Ulises Ruiz Ortiz, sent in a squad of 3,000 pigs to violently clear out the teacher's occupation and shut down their radio station, Radio Plantón, which have been broadcasting updates about the strike alongside interviews with grateful parents and students. Well, as shit turns out, that was a big motherfucking mistake. Responded immediately to this blatant act of aggression, thousands of thieves took to the streets, kicked the pigs out of Dodge, and set to work building barricades. At its peak, the Oaxaca commune was dotted with over 3,000 barricades, which completely paralyzed the pigs' ability to operate, launch raids, or make deployments anywhere in the fucking city. In other words, for months, there were no motherfucking police. Within this power vacuum, a horizontal structure of popular self-governance called the Asamblea Popular de los Pueblos de Oaxaca, or APO, was formed to take over the coordination of self-defense and organization of everyday life in the commune. The revolt spread quickly across Oaxaca, with students occupying their universities and other peeps occupying government buildings and forming popular assemblies in the cities and villages across the state. All of these assemblies issued repeated demands that the state's governor step down and fuck off. On August 1st, a mob of revolutionary women seized the state radio and television stations, transforming them into vital hubs of communication and coordination, broadcasting regular revolutionary programming and updates of activity within the liberated area. Women took a leading role in many other aspects of the insurrections as well, from organizing rallies and marches to defending barricades, and by doing so were able to temporarily liberate themselves from the patriarchal division of labor that had traditionally relegated them to roles as domestic caregivers. Tragically, the Oaxaca Commune had its beating heart ripped out in late October, when an army of federal police managed to clear out the occupied Sokolo in Oaxaca City. While sustained resistance continues for another two months, these were dark fucking days in which many revolutionary militants were detained and arrested on trumped up charges, and dozens more disappeared or assassinated by motherfucking paramilitary death squads working for the Mexican security forces. But while the Oaxaca commune was ultimately crushed by this grim fucking wave of repression, the spirit of revolt that inspired and drew upon has lived on. Today, Oaxaca remains a site of militant resistance to the neoliberal fuckery of the Mexican state. And the teachers from Section 22, who helped kick things off a decade ago, are still at the forefront of this resistance. For the past several years, they have been fighting against attempts by the country's gringo hugging jefe Enrique Peña Nieto to enforce capitalist reforms on the state education system. So, to learn a bit more about what's been going down, I recently caught up with Cesar Chavez a teacher from Oaxaca and a member of Section 22 of the CNTE. Hey Cesar, how the fuck are you? Bueno, pues, uh, well, we are working hard, we're tired. Shortly after being elected Mexico's current president, Enrique Peña Nieto passed a series of neoliberal reforms called the Pact for Mexico. One of these reforms was an overhaul of the Mexican education system. Can you explain the motivations behind these reforms and why they spark resistance from teachers in Oaxaca? In 2012, in the presidential elections in Mexico, the PRI came back into power, the party that has been abusing the Mexican people for most of the last 100 years. The Pact for Mexico is basically a plot to reform various government-run institutions which requires changes to the Mexican Constitution being pushed for by the United States. They want to privatize all of the productive sectors of the country, energy, labor, finance, even water. And one of the specific reform deals is the third article of the Mexican Constitution, which the government needs to change in order to allow for the privatization of education. So the state is seeking to avoid its obligation to guarantee free public and non-religious education. 
which in its basic form covers children from the age of 3 to 15 years old. And one of the principal obstacles is the rights of teachers to permanent labor contracts. So they've invented an evaluation that will allow them to lay off teachers without any legal recourse. And they're proposing this as a federal education model. But here in Oaxaca, we teachers are continuing to struggle and to fight, as always, because we are against the privatization of educational services. Their proposed reforms would mean three years from now that many poor children from the barrios won't be able to go to school. Without offering basic education services, they are dooming our children to misery. And it's clear that this is a model being imposed by the World Bank and the IMF. They are imposing this type of model in Latin America, and they have already experimented with this model in other South American countries. And now they want to implement it in Mexico. But here in Oaxaca, we are going to resist because children deserve free, public, and non religious education.